Welcome to part 10D of this uh, long, drawn-out, never-ending series on, on obtaining your ham license. Okay, we're at the point in this thing where I, I don't know if I made the repair to the uh, transmitter or not. I remember from the last, uh, or the previous, maybe the one before that, I think it was, you, you, you knew I was having a little trouble neutralizing uh, the two output beam power tubes. The 6146Ws, and I think I've got it fixed. You know, we're fixing to find out, and here's where it all begins. Well, uh, before we do that, I think old Rocky wanted to get into the picture here, so here he is with his favorite toy. Say, <laughs> everywhere he goes, we take him out and walk him around the yard. He carries a stupid tennis ball with him. Everywhere he goes, gotta have that tennis ball. He loves his tennis ball, don't you? Yes, you do. He's doing real good. He's really gotten big and healthy. For those of you who uh, recall in my earlier videos, last year this time, just about this time, he was just a little dinky puppy. But now he's, he's part of the family now. He's a good fella here. Here, watch this now. He goes crazy. He goes crazy. Look at him. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Well, as you can see, I'm getting it very, very close. This is in the plate position, and when I turn the final knob, I need to minimize it. Now, that's, that's pretty pretty minimal there. When I go to the relative power position, I need to maximize it. That brings it up. I mean, we're just about, I think, you know, one of the problems is I've never messed with transmitters before. Now, is this good enough? You know, I mean, are we close enough? And, uh, of course, I always have to take into consideration how accurate is this meter? You know, it's never been calibrated. It's been probably banged around, and it's old. Uh, the capacitor itself that I have to adjust, this uh, neutralizing capacitor down in there, uh, is old. But it would seem to me, just from general experience, that those two indications are close enough. But I really don't know for sure. Okay, once again, we have Glenn. He has just arrived, and he has just sat down. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, John. And, and he's going to go ahead and check out and see if I have actually neutralized or re repaired the neutralization issue we had on, on my radio. What I did, I tried everything. Eventually, it came down to replacing this tube right here, which is V7. Uh, these two output uh, power tubes all feedback through it to a tank circuit tank uh, circuits that are created off the plate of V7 and uh, I went ahead and ordered a new one and put it in and it seems to have brought it right in where I wanted it so I might have had it you know kind of a tube that wasn't putting out as much as it should so my theory is going to be proven or disproven by uh, Glenn <laughs> let's see what he does with it go for it big boy okay Glenn just said we're neutralized and good to go and we're gonna start uh, working with the tuner uh, right now, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay, Glenn says it's all tuned up, ready to go. My SWRs are set good. We're on the 40 meter band, and we're he's ready to do a, a transmit check. Just uh, trying to find a good uh, a good station right now where he can maybe do a quick CQ. Glenn says I'm going to have to do a little work on my uh, dial. It, uh, it's not quite accurate like it should be, but that's okay. And that's something I can deal with. Okay, right now we're listening to a transmission between Sonoma, California, I guess is, which is Northern California, and a fella in Spain. We're on the 20 meter band, incidentally, and it is 11.05 in the morning. All right, Glenn just had a conversation with a fella in San Diego. It was a W6XX. The fella's name was Pete. And uh, he said we were coming in, uh, we kind of varied a little bit on the strength of the signal he was getting. What, 5, five to 5.7, five, something like that, he five, said? 5.7, 5.8, yeah. 5.7, five, 5.8, five, and it would kind of go up and down. But I guess that's uh, atmospheric conditions maybe cause that. Using a G5 RV, which is, this guy was putting out, uh, what would you say, about a, a kilowatt, <laughs> thousand watts. And he was looking for contacts in Europe, and we were able to actually say hi to the fella. And he came back, they had a little bit of conversation. We're doing good. Glenn says we're ready to go. Uh, tuning the radio and in conjunction with the uh, the MFJ 949E, 
uh, on a Heathkit HW101 requires a, a, you to be ambidextrous. You have to. It's a two-prong effort. The first thing you have to do is a, is a tune your radio, and then you have to come over here and tune your antenna. So uh, the first thing we have to do uh, in with the HW101 is uh, make sure it's in the uh, plate position to, to uh, monitor your idling plate or your uh, plate current, and then uh, you have to have it in the tune position, which is here, and then. Your mic level is what brings up your your uh, RF. You've got to have some RF on that thing in order for the radio to work. So you bring it up, 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 and then keep turning to the right. Now it's starting to go down, down, down. Okay, up, 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 the other way, down, down, down. That point where it starts to flip over, that's called the dip point. So we'll leave that thing right there. Now we'll come over here and we'll notice on the meter that we've got, oh my goodness, we got about 25 watts with a pretty, pretty, of output with a pretty low reflected power, which is great. Now, as I turn this final knob right here, we'll kind of keep an eye on, on this and watch what happens here. See how it goes up? The power has gone up to 100, uh, we're going to get to make sure this thing, yeah, it's in the, uh, it's in the tuned uh, dummy load position. Anyway, the power has gone up to, oh my goodness, about 80 watts, but so has the SWR. So what we need to do is bring the right hand one down while keeping the left hand one up. Where they cross these red lines tells us what our SWR is. We want to get it as, the SWR as low as possible. We want those lines to cross somewhere down in this area right here, not up in this area here. Although right now it's about oh about a one one to four. So let's see if we can't crank this thing down a little bit. There, see, watch the right one. That's the one I want to go down. The left one will pretty much take care of itself. Nope, going wrong way. Come down, 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 down. Good. Okay, that's as low as it's going to go right there. Now we kind of work the transmitter uh, knob here. That comes down, 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 down even further. Ooh, it's looking real good. Man, we're down to about a one to one ratio on the 40 meter band which is very good and we're and right now uh, in the tuned position we're showing about uh, only about 75 watts not quite 80 and uh, when we go back to the antenna position uh, everything will be fine I hope that all makes sense incidentally I'm lighting up the meter on the uh, antenna tuner I went down to Walmart and picked up this universal uh, wall wart it uh, can be used on a USB port all the way up to 12 volts. And uh, it's just a matter of flipping this switch to the voltage that you want. I have it set on 12 volts is what's required. And it comes with several little adapter connectors. You pick out the one that fits to your needs, which I did, which was sitting in there. And uh, all I have to do now is uh, flip this switch right here anytime uh, I want to use it, and it'll come on. Pretty slick. It only cost a couple of bucks, wasn't very much at all. Well, that about wraps that up. I've got the transmit side and the receive side squared away. Uh, the next step, as I stated, uh, was to, is to get the dial uh, calibration uh, in line where it's supposed to be, calibrated properly. That's proving to be a little bit difficult. Uh, I've been out of town for the last few days, you know, Thanksgiving and all. We, we went a couple of hundred miles uh, up to my son's place. Just got back a little while ago. So I'll be uh, working on that over the next couple days. Plus, I've got a bathroom leak in my mother-in-law's bathroom so on the floor, so I'm going to have to tear that mess up. So it'll be a couple days before I can get back with you. Uh, for those that are still interested, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm beginning to get disinterested myself. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens. I'd like to get on the air. Uh, the, next, the next video after this one will uh, tell you how I made out with the calibration of the dial. And uh, it'll also uh, tell you when I plan to do my first CQ. And uh, it'll, I'll give you the day, the time, and uh, uh, the frequency, the, the, you know, the band and, and the, the somewhat close uh, frequency. Uh, some of you had been wanting me to tell you, uh, sending me messages and things. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that, you know. I will say this will be probably be on an 80 meter band. It will be at night. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, until then, uh, this is John. Take it easy.